We are live. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my live uh, Facebook stream. Joined today by a very special guest, or animal, rather, uh, Lola. Just <laughs> laying down right there. So hopefully she won't be uh, too much hassle. Hey, listen, so uh, today I want to, here she comes. Today I wanted to talk more about um, fitness and training. I mentioned uh, about doing, okay, she wants to sit right here. <laughs> I mentioned that uh, we'd be talking about fitness stuff, uh, gym stuff. We tried doing it in the gym. The, uh, yeah, not you. The Wi-Fi wasn't uh, strong enough, so we're back in the house uh, with Lola to demonstrate, because she's got the best chest I've ever seen. No. Um, hey, listen, if, um, if you've subscribed to my uh, newsletter, you'll have received this morning um, my five variations of uh, a thicker chest, and that's really what I'm gonna break down here. If you haven't got it or you haven't subscribed, don't worry. Uh, keep it in mind. I'll, uh, I'll post a link under this video after it's finished and it'll be on my uh, Facebook page, Rob Riches Fitness. So you can click on that. Um, tons of stuff with this one. I've, I've got my laptop here. When this, hey, over there, go over there. Let daddy work. There we go. Lay down, lay down. All right, that's not gonna work. I've got my laptop here. I'm gonna break down the exercises one by one, talk about them. I guess she wants to sit right here. So, um, this is really what we're going to be breaking down today. I don't know if we can see. Probably not too well. I'll, uh, I'll post the link after, but basically it's five variations that I found have been uh, really beneficial in helping to grow the chest. I'm not just talking about getting a big chest, I'm talking about thickening it out, uh, getting the inner pectorals a little bit more meatier. Uh, and helping it round off towards where, you know, shoulder caps and the, the arms. So, all right, baby, you need to go over here. Go over there, lay down, lay down, lay down. Okay, find your toy instead. She may have to go away. Five variations of uh, a thicker chest. Don't worry, I am gonna uh, get to some of your questions as well. You can probably tell if you've uh, been following me on uh, social media. Uh, I have the same top on as the post yesterday in honor of uh, that post. Loaded day, you gotta see how she's laying. Full frontal, not this kind of video. All right, these are five tips about um, basically improving your chest game. So um, I'll go through each of them one by one and then uh, start to uh, answer some of your questions. Uh, tip number one is uh, bad form can limit your progress. Tip two, uh, take it down to the floor. Take three, or tip three, change the angle. Tip number four, isolate and rotate. And tip number five, take a bow. And I'm gonna break down each one of these so you can kind of, if you're watching the video back or you wanna go back to this video, you can fast forward, skip through and basically find some of the points that are relevant uh, to you. So the first point is uh, about bench press. And I mentioned uh, what's, what's wrong with bench pressing. You know what, let me, uh, let me kind of hold up. You can see a little bit there. This is uh, taken from my newsletter, and uh, again, I'll, I'll post the link. You guys can download it and view everything. So bench press, as we know, is probably the cornerstone, the king of chest exercises. My problem with this is we start to get uh, allow our ego to get in the way. Easy to put too much weight on, um, and it's almost like we're showing off, whether it's to anyone else watching or just for ourselves. I've been there many a times. I've got maybe two plates on either side, about uh, 100 and, uh, 225 pounds, 100 kilos, getting nine, 10 reps and thinking like, all right, I can, uh, I can start to lift a little more. So what do I do? I put another 25 pounds on each end. All of a sudden, my 10 pretty good reps start to come down to three or four. I'm arching my back and what tends to happen is I lose the tension, the stress, the effectiveness in my chest. So it becomes more about how much weight can I lift rather than um, how effective is this exercise for my chest. And one of the reasons I found for this is we tend to arch our lower back. It's a little bit tricky to kind of get the point when I'm sat here in clothes, but trust me, if I was in the gym trying to do this, we'd be losing the stream, people would be back and forth. They just I'll post a video over the weekend of this full workout that I'm talking about, and again, you can... Um, Dude, someone's got the same name as me, Riches. Romaine Riches, maybe a, a long relative of some sort. 
I, right, I can see questions coming up on the, the side of the screen up here. So when you arch the back, this is typically from uh, powerlifters, when uh, powerlifters want to max their weight, and I'm speaking from observation rather than experience, so if there are powerlifters watching or, or those of you who know, uh, this isn't probably completely accurate, but uh, anyway, when I've experienced a kind of a powerlifting phase or, or mentality, especially working with the likes of Michael Hearn, which if you've seen some of those videos, what we're doing is effectively shortening the distance from uh, bringing the bar down towards our chest. We arch our lower back, lifting our chest up, increases that kind of um, diaphragm to when we breathe in, expands our chest, the bar comes down and we get all of that power. I'm not talking about maxing your um, personal best, your um, heaviest weight you can lift. I'm purely talking about, um, here she comes again, growing the chest and incorporating, engaging as many of those uh, fibers, especially the deeper fibers, the type um, two, the growth fibers. Those are the ones that you sit there. All right, you wanna say something to everyone? Not yet? She gets vocal when I ignore her, so she, she might start getting vocal soon. By arching our back, great for power, um, not necessarily ideal for in terms of uh, fiber recruitment. So one thing that uh, I've started doing, I'll show here, putting feet up either on the bench or by bringing a, uh, by bringing a box up to the front of the bench. By putting our feet on there, it kind of pushes the lower back more firmly down into the bench, allowing you to flatten out your chest. Therefore, we're basically able to get more of that stress directly across those chest fibers. You might not be able to lift as heavy, but the one thing you will find is as you bring that bar down, inhaling through the nose, expanding that diaphragm, filling the lungs with air, bar comes down, not touching, you don't want to remove any tension off of the chest muscles, but then as you extend the arms, and this is another key point in my newsletter as well, don't think about the weight at the end on the bars that you're pushing up and uh, allowing to come back down. Think more about the muscles and what they're doing. So the movement is basically creating tension in the chest and then that eccentric portion, the lengthening again of the muscle. The fact that we've got our arms up, we're holding onto the barbell with the weights on the end, that's really just added stress to be able to um, increase the amount of resistance onto the muscle. So it's easy, to, especially with bench, because we're looking right at it. And that's one of the reasons I love training chest, because I get to see the weights right in front of me. But when you're pushing that weight up and down, not in that kind of movement, of course, but when you're pushing the weight up and down like that, it's easy to fall into that kind of uh, ego trap where you're looking at the weights, you want to add more weight. And it, it is the kind of the daddy of all exercises amongst squats and deadlifts in that, in that area. Um, but really what I'm getting at here is think about tension, think about creating um, that contraction in the chest as you come down. It, you can do it just with a bar or a broomstick or just the arms out. It's the same basic movement. What we're doing is just adding or increasing the amount of stress onto the muscle. So that'd be my first tip. Keeping your feet either up onto the bench or by uh, putting them onto a box at the front of the bench, therefore pushing your lower hips, the lower section of the back, into the bench, flatten out your chest more, and allow for a, a greater, uh, I guess, spectrum, if you like, of muscle fibers. Don't go too heavy with this one. Make sure you can get a solid nine, 10 reps, uh, and then think about increments of about 10%. So if you're lifting 60 or 70 kilograms, adding 10% on, you're not gonna go put 20, 30 kilos back on top of that. You're gonna be looking for things like a five kilo plate each side, put them on, aim for those eight or nine reps again, and if you do that progressively, you're going to be able to increase your strength. And uh, come up over here. Horse, sit there. Okay, we'll try that one more time. Now, one other good thing about... Uh, really? Really? All right. One other good thing about putting the feet... Uh, Lola, get down. She knows... Honestly, she gets... When she sees the phone, she either thinks uh, videos or photos have been taken of her and she starts to play up. Next tip, I mentioned take it to the floor. If you haven't tried this, definitely worth a try. Actually performing a bench press on the floor, getting a spotter, a training partner, or just somebody around to actually hand you the bar, 
The great thing about this is uh, it's got a nice stable flap. She's under the tripod here. Lola, come up, 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 over there. Lay down, lay down, lay down, stay. Good girl. So you've got that platform, that um, flat surface to be able to, uh, you're basically with your feet up, you're not gonna be able to uh, be less stable as you would on the bench. Plus, your elbows can't go all the way down. So by keeping your elbows pretty much in line like this, as soon as the elbows start to touch the floor, that's your point to then push up and contract the chest. It's a little bit different. I don't do it often, but every now and again, it's like, hey, if the benches are either taken or just to be able to mix things up and uh, give myself a different workout, performing uh, a barbell bench press on the floor can work great. A couple of other options. This is uh, tip number three. Change the angle. Keep talking about barbell, and we think about um, bench press is pretty much just with a barbell or um, dumbbells, but like, let's start to think outside of that fixed thinking. Kettlebells. Kettlebells are great for a couple of reasons. One, because of their, um, the kind of density of the mass, the, the weight is in the center. It's kind of off-center depending on how you hold it, unlike barbells or dumbbells where you hold on to the center of the bar with the weights pretty much perfectly balanced either side. Holding a kettlebell, you can see um, my hand position there, hopefully up at the top. I got the kettlebells out to the side. Mashu, I'm gonna give you a shout out just because you're bombing the, uh, the comments at the moment. So there's your shout out, literally one word. You've had a couple there. Kettlebells, great thing about this is we can start to add some rotation in as well. So instead of just this single plane motion of a, a press or a fly, we start to add rotation in you can do it with dumbbells as well, but you know, switch it up with kettlebells. You're gonna find that um, it, it creates a little bit more instability. You're gonna find more muscles, synergistic muscles are gonna have to start to uh, be recruited to help with that. This is great also at the end of, uh, or, you know, second or third set maybe, or exercise, after you've got the heavier, more compound multi-joint exercises. If you wanna stick with a bench and go as heavy as you can, or an incline bench, uh, by all means. That's typically what I do. I do two presses, Incline and flat bench. Um, I'll move on to this section now actually because uh, we're talking about it. Within this newsletter, again, I'll post the link after, there's a, a, a full link to it's my old website now. But uh, it's got all of the exercises there, including exactly what I do. Exercise one, try and hold it there, scroll down. So if you want to leave the, uh, leave the stream and head over there right now, it's just Rob Richards Fitness, click under the fitness, but stay watching. You might learn a, or find a few more things that you can try out. But yeah, I would start with an incline bench press, then flat bench press, feet up on the bench or on a box, or even take the bar down to the floor. And then maybe for a final work set, I'll throw in some uh, kettlebells. Holding the kettlebells down like this, or actually more of a fly movement, so I can bring them up. It's a kind of a fly into a press movement. Add some rotation in there as well. And it's one thing that I really, I keep talking about in my newsletter is about uh, feeling the muscle, but really getting that contraction, the stress, that tension in the muscle. Think about it. We, we become kind of too um, autonomous when we do exercises in the sense that we just do the movement and we're thinking about either how much weight we're moving or uh, the, really the repetitions. We're aiming for 10 or 12 reps. We're like nine. Oh, it's a bit hard. 10, 11, ah, 12. But did you really work the muscle as hard and as, as intense as you could? I guarantee if I was training you and kicking your butt and I'm wanting you to squeeze the muscles, literally from that first rep, if it's a bench press of some sort, you're getting that bar up. But as you're doing that, you're creating tension. You're contracting the chest, squeezing it. You're not gonna hold up at the top for too long, just really a pause to flex that chest. We're not locking out the arms, we're keeping the elbows soft because we wanna keep all of the tension in the chest. All right, tip number four, isolate and rotate. I mentioned this one earlier and uh, this is really quite a different exercise. So I'm staying on the floor for this one and this is a single arm kind of dumbbell crossover or a fly type movement. If I go to my the website article, I've got it in a, a little bit more detail. Not something I do often, but here we go. 
Not something I do often, but great variation to throw in. The main benefit is we get that increased range of motion. So often when we do um, dumbbell flies, machine flies, cable flies, we stop here in the midway point. Machines are actually great if you sit on at a slight angle and we can get more, or rather this way, we can get uh, an increased range of motion. So we're getting this extra movement contraction in the chest, the uh, insertion up here, where it attaches to three main points, the clavicle, uh, the sternum or breastbone, and then part of the upper rib cage is there, and then the humerus up here. So flies are great because they allow you to really stretch out, open the chest fibers here, but again, don't go too heavy. Focus more on the feeling. Uh, I can All right, had a little uh, dead spot there. I can probably manage at most 65, 70 pound dumbbell if my form is, let's say, shaky. But I'd much rather drop down to 35 or 40 pounds and really get some good stretch in my chest. You can see I'm not bending the arm much at all. A couple of the variations, as I mentioned in the newsletter and my uh, article the website is, with cables, I will do more of a, a kind of a press fly movement there. But when it comes to fly, I want to keep the elbow fixed. I'm not going to flex that and get all of that tension, keep the contraction in the chest here. Ah, uh, this is getting weird now. But you get the idea. If it opens up like that, we're stretching out. This is the insertion where the muscle attaches to basically sections of the bone. And we're coming in and creating all of that tension. And that's without any weight. So we add weight on top of that. It's getting hot in here too now in California. Uh, that's really the focus of these exercises. And then uh, number five, take a bow. <laughs> Talking about angles here. So a chest exercise, cable flies. You know, all too often I find myself sticking with the same fixed range of motion, even though with cables, which is really what I end my workouts on, they offer a great, um, kind of a literally unrestricted, limitless range of different motions, and they allow you to keep tension on the muscle at all times. The thing with cables I find though is, if I take the pulley up, especially if they've got the arms that move out with the pulleys at the end, I'm gonna bring the arms out a little bit more, and then really, basically, as if I'm, as if I'm about to perform a bent over row or something. So my hips are back, my knees are slightly bent, my chest is almost parallel to the floor, and I'm doing a cable fly, so the, the cable pulleys are behind me. A lot of tension on my chest and a different feeling than I would uh, get if I'm performing either with dumbbells or machine. So I mentioned on my website article, again, I'll post the link uh, straight after I finish, how I'll often, uh, often rotate two different fly type movements um, within workouts each week for chest. So that might be a dumbbell fly and a machine fly, and then the next week, it might be a dumbbell fly and a cable fly. And then the week after that, it might be a machine fly and a cable fly. So even though the types of movements are pretty much the same in terms of my, my muscle group workout, I'll always start with a, a warm-up, some light stretches in there. All of that's mentioned on my article, which you guys can go check out. Uh, and then I'll move on to the heavier compound movements, a couple of presses in there, usually an incline press of some sort. Again, we've got the barbell. We've got Smith machine, which is really good. We've got some dumbbells in there as well. Then flat bench, a flat bench barbell, either on the bench or on the floor. Feet up with dumbbells, with kettlebells, tons of variations there, but the actual structure is pretty much the same. And then I'll move on to uh, one or two machines maybe, and then cables, and then as a superset or a final kind of drop set, down on the floor, body weight to push ups until I'm absolutely fatigued and my chest is thoroughly worked. So different angles there different methods in terms of the stress, the strain, how it's placed on the muscle, either a free weight with that resistance at the end of my arm, or with a machine, fixed range of motion, or with a cable, lots of different variation, but I have that constant strain, that constant tension on the muscle throughout the entire range of motion. Uh, hey, one other thing before I uh, answer a few of your questions. I mentioned last time I was finishing the uh, training guide, uh, kind of a fat loss factors guide, we finished that, a big shout out to my buddy, uh, Ali, or Ali, Ali Adams. Uh, I've just posted about him on my Facebook, actually. He helped uh, pretty much design everything. So I mentioned before, if you guys are looking for a designer, go check him out. Uh, the link is under my uh, a post from just before this video. Really awesome in terms of content. I'll kind of just flick through it here, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So uh, 
This is the guide. You can get this for free. Let's go through a couple of the pages. So it's kind of like a, an ebook. Probably can't see it too well. I'll go down here. It's, it's literally 26 pages, all about um, five or six of my factors, how to uh, how to maximize fat loss, and lots of charts like this one here. So this is all in the uh, the newsletter. It's on my website as well. You guys can download it, print it out, do whatever you want with it. But uh, it's basically a full chapter from my book uh, for free. You guys can have it. Don't have to buy anything with it. Just check it out. And if the information is useful, then um, awesome. Feel free to share it, post about it. So uh, that rounds up my topic today, which was uh, five variations for a chest workout. Just to summarize, and then I'll uh, answer some questions. Uh, kind of went over... So bad form can limit your progress. By that, I mean letting your ego get in the way, starting to focus more on weight uh, without really focusing on the actual feeling in the muscle. Uh, tip number two, possibly take it down to the floor. Get away from the bench. Uh, unrestrict the um, restrictions, I guess, that a bench might place on, upon you, which can also mean putting your feet up, flattening out your lower back, uh, plus tons of different variations with things like your single arm, fly, your kettlebell presses, your barbell press. Uh, number three, uh, change the angle. Again, that could be with kettlebells. Dumbbells, often when I do a fly, I add a rotation in there. Really helps kind of pull in more of that lower pec. And just let's be clear here. I'm not saying that if you do this or if you do an incline press, you're going to work your upper chest. It's the same kind of muscle. You've got the uh, major pectoralis, which is basically your chest, and then you've got a kind of Little muscle sat underneath, more with the rib cage, which is um, your minor pectoralis. So it's like with abs in every muscle group. If you're working a particular movement, stressing that muscle, you're working the full muscle. You can't work just half that muscle or some of the fibers. What I'm saying is you're placing a different kind of stress onto that muscle. So upper chest, often when we form an inclined chest, that stress is coming at that muscle from a different angle. So you can still get a great upper chest just by doing bench press. I just don't want to limit myself to one or two movements and I like a lot of variation and it gives me a, a different sensation, different focus when I'm squeezing that muscle. So that's why I typically start with an incline, then flat bench, a couple of machines, flies, cable flies and uh, push-ups. A couple of people asking about um, low, low weight, high reps. I mentioned all of that on my article. I keep the weight pretty high. You know, I'm not going to lie, I still push as heavy as I can lift for those 10 or 12 reps. It's just not... Look at it this way. If we were to do uh, a 10 rep max, and many of you are probably stronger than me. I've lost a bit of strength since uh, I'm just not competing and my focus is beyond that of fitness in a, in a sense, but still pretty strong for my size. If I could do uh, 10 reps, let's say with uh, 120 kilos, just as a number. If that's my absolute maximum that I can possibly do, then in reality, I'm still gonna be aiming for about 100, 105, so about like 90% of my maximum, 90, 95. Rarely will I go to 100% of my maximum weight that I could possibly lift, purely because I feel like it's taking me too far away from the um, ability to hold that tension in my muscle. So let me say between 85 to 95% of the maximum weight that you can lift with a rep range of usually 12 down to 10, down to eight, so I, I do kind of, drop my reps down sometimes if I'm increasing the weight, but uh, the focus is still to hit 10, 10 reps pretty much. If I can do 12 on the first couple of sets, I will. Once I start adding the weight, I find my sweet spot, and then I might on that third or even fourth set, all of which is on the newsletter and my article, uh, start to push the weight up a little bit more and find that um, my focus, creating tension in the muscle, isn't quite there. So. Uh, rep range, 12 down to 8, weights uh, in terms of the percentage of what you can lift, 85 to 95%. Uh, isolate and rotate, and then the final tip is uh, take a bow, change your angle. Cables are great for that, change the angle of the cable pulley, change the angle of how you're actually positioning your body, and also at times try changing uh, the elbow. Maybe you do flies just keeping the elbows bent like this, keep the arms pretty much stretched out, slight bend, or try some flies where you are actually bending and flexing the elbow. It's all about how it feels on the muscle and how much you're able to uh, 
contract that muscle, keep that tension, squeeze it throughout the movement, especially at the end of that rep. All right, that wraps up uh, my little talk. Let me go to uh, some of your questions now. And then, uh, got a busy day today, but I'll post the links onto, uh, on here for you guys to go check out the newsletter, get that uh, fat loss guide, and also see the full chest workout on my article. Couple of questions here. Okay, uh, just gonna see what I, answer what I see here. Uh, Elton saying uh, dumbbell or barbell press for chest, your personal preference. Yeah, you know, I mix it up, barbell typically, uh, probably like a three to one ratio. And by that, I mean, I'll do three workouts using barbells, especially for bench presses. Uh, and then maybe on the fourth workout, uh, I'll switch it up just so I've got something different going on with dumbbells. But I prefer barbells with the heavier weight just because I'm distributing that weight more evenly across the bar. It's easier for me to then push a heavier weight and get that contraction. If I use the same in dumbbells, I'm having to stabilize the dumbbells, which is great, but in terms of uh, hitting my threshold, that capacity for as much weight as I can lift, I prefer barbells, but that's not exclusive. It's just a, a, a mix more towards barbell than dumbbell. Okay, uh, uh, Emin asking how many exercises for chest. <laughs> my answer is always stir up a little controversy here. I, I, I like volume, so chest, I easily I could do five exercises. Incline barbell, uh, flat barbell, then um, dumbbell flies, then maybe, uh, you know, sometimes I'll mix it up with uh, dips, Paolo bar dips, really leaning forwards. Not so much the lower chest, it's just a great stretch. So that could be ex exercise number four. Some cable flies of some variety or a machine fly, so that's five exercises right there. Plus if I add in a drop set or superset of some push-ups, it's kind of six exercises, but all performed within 50 minutes an hour. So not huge in terms of volume like that. It's just intensity on working the chest from an array of different angles within that time frame. Oh, okay, let's see what else. A uh, couple of people asking about the shirt. This is my favorite one. I'm normally in tank tops or gym, like Nike t-shirts or so on. Uh, this is G-Star. I don't know if they still make it anymore. Uh, G-Star Raw. Yeah, just uh, a shirt from G-Star. The other one I had was uh, H&M, that green one, H&M. People keep having a go at me for pronouncing letters differently now that I'm in America. But uh, a lot of my clothes are from uh, H&M, G-Star, and uh, Nike. That's pretty much it. Uh, okay, uh, looking through some of the questions. Uh, Michael says, uh, every time he trains legs, uh, he always gets sick. Uh, is there a way to prevent that without backing off the intensity? Ah, uh, Michael, I've been there, man. It sucks, I don't know. It depends whether the intensity is on uh, the amount of weight that you're doing, like you're lifting a lot, a lot of weight. Uh, maybe it's to do with the amount of volume, the intensity. Could be with mealtime as well, depending on when you eat, whether it's a shake, uh, what kind of protein that might be, how close towards uh, the workout that you're eating. Sometimes it could be like pre-workouts or other supplements. Uh, best way to kind of counter at that is to write down all of these factors, your food, whether it's protein shake before, uh, pre-workout drinks, any other supplements, and kind of remove them one by one altogether, even before your leg workout and see if that makes a difference. I found, uh, I found sometimes, even with coffee, if I have coffee more than an empty stomach and if I do legs or if I haven't eaten for a long time, there's that kind of... Uh, acid buildup or acid reflux, so it could be one of those, but uh, hard to give you a definitive answer. Try and identify all the possible causes and kind of eliminate one by one and uh, uh, see how that, that gives you the outcome. Uh, uh, kid Kid, I think you're, uh, when do you plan to produce your own sportswear? Ah, we're working on it now. Uh, you'll see when it's done. Uh, but yeah, you'll see me wear it in a lot of my videos and posts. It's gonna be, it's not just, uh, everyone talks about this. It's not just a typical tank top or a typical t-shirt. Uh, so probably in the next uh, four or five weeks, just nice back, back rest here with the dog leaning behind me. So yeah, a couple more, another month or two at most. Uh, Varun, how do you make the chest line deeper that separates it? So we're talking about the inner uh, pec thing here. 
it's not a muscle, it's just where it's, it's the insertions of the chest fibers that come here. So the thicker, meatier the chest is, the more that kind of pumps up. Everything. It's more the focus on when you're lifting the bench presses, dumbbell presses, kettlebell presses, dumbbell flies, machine flies, it's all of this, but it's, it's making sure that you're, for me anyway, getting that muscular contraction in at the end of the movement and like pretty much during. So let's say you perform bench press. Think of that from start to finish as like rinsing a, a cloth. I've mentioned this a couple of times. Anyone who, and me growing up in England, I used to always wash my car with my dad every Sunday. Something I still do here in America, even though everyone seems to take it to the um, car wash place. But if you've ever washed your car and uh, you know, you, you're drying it with the chamois leather and you kind of rinse it off, it doesn't have to be a chamois leather, it can be a dishcloth or whatever you wash up with, and you rinse it off like this, and it's that applying the tension and it gets more and more. I think of that when I do pretty much all my exercises. So I'm creating that tension as though I'm providing torque on that muscle. The more, the closer I get towards the end of that rep, I've got the most amount of tension in that chest. I'm really squeezing the chest as much as I can and then allowing the bar to come down, breathing in, bringing the bar down just about an inch from my chest and then I repeat. It's those kind of techniques and principles that I find really give you the, the best effort, the best um, route in terms of thickening out that lower chest. So it's not a particular exercise, it's not a supplement, it's not clothes. It's just time spent doing the right thing, progressively building up, allowing your chest muscles to grow. Lots of that on the newsletter. I talk specifically about that point, actually, and on, uh, on the website. Uh, all right, a couple more questions. Uh, Sean. Sean Douglas uh, Peterson asks, uh, for how long should you rest before you hit chest again? For me, it's at least three days. Uh, and by that, I'm, I'm trying to work in other muscle groups around it. So if I train chest, chest and um, heck, forearms or something it might be, just throw a little muscle group in there, then I'm gonna be conscious of when I'm training shoulders, when I'm training back. So if I train chest and uh, forearms on a Monday, Tuesday might be hamstrings and calves. Wednesday could be um, biceps, biceps and... Uh, uh, triceps and traps or something, but you see now the chest starts to come in again. So back back and biceps might be a good uh, split, even though chest is kind of indirectly worked and then come uh, Thursday, shoulders, shoulders and some more forearms or something. So the chest has kind of worked, but it's had a good two, three days, 48, 72 hours of pretty much recovery without being used. So I'd say minimum two, if not three days before any other muscle groups have worked again. Let's see, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna finish on uh, Sal's question. Uh, do you only do one muscle group per day? One big muscle group. So I kind of break it down, chest, in no particular order, but chest, back, quads, hamstrings, biceps, triceps and traps, uh, and then a kind of shoulder exercise. So I've mentioned before, seven exercise, seven kind of muscle groups. So I could train for a full week without a rest day, mainly because of how the muscle groups are, are kind of positioned within that week. Uh, but basically it's, it's a full workout for my muscles within those uh, seven days, and I might have a rest day in the middle or after four days. Uh, but yeah, one big muscle group and then a smaller muscle group, meaning everything from uh, just the trap muscle, forearms, calves, abs usually as well. So forearms and calves are trained twice a week within that. Abs are trained usually in the morning. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much how I structure my uh, workout. You want to go on a walk? All right, come up here. Let's say bye to everyone. And uh, I'm going to wrap things up. Got to take this little beautiful girl out for a walk. And uh, I'll be sure to post all of these links up on the website, up on the Facebook page after. So, you want to say bye? <laughs> She's so freaking adorable. All right, guys. Um, listen, I'll be back Monday. I'll probably do some more nutrition stuff. Check out uh, Robert's Fitness Under Training. You can see the, uh, the full chest article. And also, check back on this video in uh, the next 20, 30 minutes. I'll put the link so that you guys can uh, 
get this newsletter. You can get the uh, uh, training guide and fat loss factors. And I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, go, let's go. Peace out, see you later.